Yes, sir. Day 343. I am Jay Pitts presents. I am your life coach and class is definitely in session. Hey, listen, it's Friday. Put a yen on your Friday. I said put a yen on Friday. Life is like a big piece of cake. You just need to put some icing on it. Put some icing on that cake. Life becomes more sweeter when you just put icing on it. If life was cake, just put some icing on it. It's Friday. Put a yay on your Friday. That means how you treat today is going to determine how you spend your weekend. You only, hey, today could be your last day. You just never know. But the at the way you're going about your day, do you think that's healthy? Do you think that's profitable? Do you think that's going to lead you to where you want to be in life? You think it's going to help you get closer to your goals? Feel more secure within you? Grant you more peace? It's not. So you're going to have to change. You're going to have to make some conscious decisions. So I'm telling you, hey, look, yeah, yeah. It's Friday. Put a yay on your Friday. You got one life to live. Yeah, just because it's raining outside doesn't mean it got to rain in your mind, heart, body, and soul. And we just coming off this good workout. What, day 343? Big bag, big vibes, big energy. What up, Toy? I see you, Queen. I see you getting it in, too, Queen. I see you. I see you. Uh, yeah, putting in that work. Putting in that work. Yeah, I respect it. Hey, respect it. Number love. But hey, yeah. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. You know how we do when we first start out. Uh, let's get the vibes going. Let's get the vibes going. Here's what we're not going to do. <laughs> oh, this she all calling. But in my phone, yeah. on the trips, my baby, baby, baby. Yeah, 
I am Jay Pitts presents I Am Your Life Coach, and class is definitely in session. Hey, yo, like I said, it's Friday. Put a year on your Friday. You got one life to live. Don't sit back and trick off your day, your time, all because of certain situations. Um, you got to start managing your time wisely. It's important. Life is about perspective. And a lot of times, your view is the way it is because of your inner views. Your inner views. Things that you've experienced change your outlook. But make sure if you went through something negative, make sure that it doesn't, your inner views don't change your outlook in a way where you just look at life as if it's not worth living. This is why suicide is very high. It's because certain experiences come into you, changing your inner views, which flaws or decay your outlook on life. Your outlook on life is flawed because of your inner views. That's, that's, that's the main reason why suicide is so very high. People will get in a low place. And I'm going to tell you the worst lie you can tell is the one you tell yourself that it's over. No, life proves that, that it ain't over. You want to know why it ain't over? It ain't over because you're still here. Life brings opportunity. You just got to see it that way. You got to see it as an opportunity. What up, nigga? What up, Londa? What up, Alita? What up, CC? So you already know. Life, life you got to see it as an opportunity. Some people will be well alive, well alive, but then they'll say to themselves, well, I ain't going to never make it, or it's over. Or, man, some people feel like, you know, they, they don't want to live no more. Why? Why don't want to live no more? Because of their interviews. Their interviews will change their outlook. And you'll start believing because of how you feel. But there's a difference between how you feel and what's real. See, sometimes how you feel is real. It is real. But sometimes you feel like how you feel because you're caught up in your feelings, but you're not standing on facts, data, statistics. Things that are truthful. See, you can look at today and say, you know what? Man, I ain't feeling today. Well, you ain't going to feel it because you already done put it out there. But if you change your mind, which it means is not factual, you can see today in a better way. And today can end up being one of the best days of your life. You got to see it that way, though. See, you got to be open minded. When you're so closed minded. If you wake up today and say, you know what, man, today ain't going to be a great day, that's what you're going to stand on because you're so closed-minded on one thing that's actually negative. Here's like the song say, here's what we're not going to what we're not going to do. We're not going to waste no time. Here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to keep making excuses. Here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to keep allowing other people to waste our time. We're not going to stay in a place that's very low and make that a lifestyle, meaning you will get in a low place and become comfortable because some of y'all are very comfortable with pain. Some of y'all are okay with poor behavior being done to you. Some of y'all have become accustomed to disrespect because you never said nothing or did something about it. Well, Proverbs says, an action causes a reaction. See, how are you reacting to an act that was very dishonorable? Proverbs says, an action causes a reaction. Some of y'all folk will do something negative to you and you don't do nothing. And you don't say nothing. And this is why some females and some men are accustomed to pain. They're accustomed to hurt. They're accustomed to poor behaviors because you allowed yourself to stay in a position so long that now you think that's a way of life. I know people who think abuse is a form of love. Why? Because they allow somebody to abuse them, whether it was physically or verbally or even mentally so long that they think that's the way to love. That even when they meet somebody that is loving and healthy, they can't even receive them. They can't receive them. Why? Because they become accustomed to some BS that ain't healthy, that ain't worthy, that ain't to be respected. So you got to take back your life. Free yourself mentally, emotionally, sexually, 
financially, especially when you're getting out of a bad relationship. You got to flush yourself from past energy, things that's been hindering you. You got to get over you so you can get over that. Because a lot of times you can leave somebody, but still living up under that relationship bond. Meaning they ain't with you no more, but you're still living as if you're connected to them. Why? Because you've yet to forgive. You've yet to let go. You've yet to make peace with what you've been through so you can see where God is taking you. See, sometimes you just got to get to yourself and say, you know what? It is what it is. Let the chips fall where they're supposed to lay. What up, Siobhan? Let the chips fall where they're supposed to lay. It, it's, it is what it is. It's going to be what, it, what it's going to be. Like I told a client earlier this morning, you are where you are. You are where you're supposed to be. What's supposed to happen going to happen. What you have is what you have. Who you are right now in this current moment is who you are. The fact that you're on this live, you're on this live for a reason, but you're on this live and that's a part of your purpose. Don't nothing in life happens for no reason. Everything happens for a reason. It's your job to reveal it. It's your job to question and understand it. See, you gotta look, you gotta pay attention to the details. Man, I, I got a good brother, man, a, a homie, man. He called me yesterday, man. And I just said, you know, after having a conversation with him, <laughs> I said, well, let, let's just set the record straight, brother. Like, I'm not an advocate for divorce. Because I guess more or less from his perspective, it was more or less like, you know, Yes, it, let's, let's just get in a relationship, and when things don't go right, just leave. No, no, that I said that's not what I'm promoting. Because some people, life is about perspective. They, some people can take a certain situation or see what somebody else done or what somebody else been through, and say, you know what, I should do that too. Yeah, but you gotta do it in reason. You gotta do it in wisdom. It got to make sense. Plan, preparation, and action. See, in relationship, and those of you that are in serious relationship or been in serious relationship know this, no relationship is perfect. You're going to go through ups and downs. See, I ain't talking to y'all fake people. Y'all can go stand in the hallway. This is for the real people. I'm talking to the real lovers. I'm talking to the lovers that's on the mission. I ain't talking to you fake and phonies. Y'all can sit out the class for a moment. Y'all can sit out in the class for a moment. I'm talking about the real lovers. The real lovers. The real lovers that truly, truly love, know how to love. I'm not an advocate for divorce. I'm an advocate for healthy living. If you in a bad headspace, a bad place, a bad situation, with somebody that is abusive, maybe mentally, verbally, physically. Common sense say, why are you still there? Why are you still entertaining it? Because when you entertain something, it is now beginning to invade you. And some of you, if you stay in it too long, that can become your life. That can become who you are. That can change your whole worldview on how you look at people. Men, women, and relationships. Let me tell you the worst decision in the world you can make right now. Go through a bad relationship with that one nincompoop and then say, you don't want to talk to no women no more. You don't want to talk to no men no more. Or you done with relationship. So you're going to allow that one person or that one experience to dictate the rest of your life? That's crazy to me. Riddle me this. How is it that somebody, you've been with you all your life, but somebody can come in your life for a small fraction, small fraction, and then you allow them to change your worldview on how you should live? Come on, make it make sense. Come on, speak God. Make it make sense. I'm just, I just, I just want, I'm just asking a question. I just want to know. I'm asking a question. How can you be with you all your life? 
and allow somebody to come in your life for a fraction, a fraction, and they change your whole worldview on how you want to live going forward. That ain't right. When somebody changes who they've been all their life for an experience, negative experience that they experienced with one individual, allowing them to change their worldview or life, it only proves that you was not living right prior to them. Come on, speak God. Wisdom says you was not living right prior to them because there's no way possible that person should shape your view on life in a negative way. So when you say to yourself, well, you know, I, I, I ain't trusting no women no more. I ain't trusting no man no more. Man, I'm done with relationship. You gave them that much power to stop what you know you love, what you know you desire, what you know you want out of this life. You was in the relationship with that person to have love. But because that love failed, you're going to allow that love to decay or flaw or blur or crust your view on life going forward, y'all got to stop. You have to grow up. You got to spiritually mature because the reality is only a fool would give somebody or one experience, one bad experience, that much power. Only a fool would allow someone to have that much power where you can allow one relationship, one man, one woman, one bad situation to change your worldview on how you're going to live life going forward. Come on, make it make sense. Look at your age like I do my clients. Look at your age right now. You've been with you all your life. You've been in that relationship how long? You was in that relationship how long? You're in that relationship right now how long? You are not in that relationship longer than you've been alive. So there's no way you can give weight or even power to a man or woman or experience or a situation where they can flow your worldview on living. Otherwise, you're weak-minded. Otherwise, you need to mature. Otherwise, you need to grow up. No man deserves all that power where they can dictate the rest of your life because of how they treated you. Because of what they did to you. There's no way you've been with you all your life. And somebody can do you wrong. And you change your whole view. You don't want to trust nobody no more. You don't want to love nobody no more. Because of one person. Why can't in wisdom or in maturity. That just be your, your experience. Why can't that be just your journey. Why can't that be just a chapter in your life. Why are you allowing certain experiences to change your whole worldview on how you should live? There's some growing up in you that you need to look at, look into. Because the reality is there's no way, no way you give that situation that much power. When you was living before them, with them, and will be living after them. So stop giving so much weight and power over one bad situation or a few bad situations because even God said even when you add up all your relationships it still does not match how long you've been alive how long you've been alive no here's what we're not going to do we're not wasting no more time here's what we're not going to do we're not going to keep making excuses as to why we can't grow up and mature here's what we're not going to do we're not going to keep walking around here not forgiving Forgiving, forgiveness is a part of peace. Peace is a part of freedom. Freedom is a part of clarity. And you need this to be able to live your life healthy going forward. I am not an advocate for divorce. I am more of an advocate for healthy living. My number one question in my sessions when people hire me for relationships. You can tell me everything upon the sun about your relationship. You can tell me everything up under the sun about your relationship, but the reality is how you feel in this current moment. That's all that matters. See, folk, they'll, they'll give me this whole drawn out story of their relationship. And I'll sit there and say, interesting. That's interesting. And then when they're done, 
I have an important question to ask you. How do you feel right now? Current, what is your current state? Because that's all we need to focus on. How is this relationship bettering you? How is this relationship bringing the best out of you? How do you feel when you're around them? Who are you when you're around them? What have you accomplished by being with them? See, y'all got to start asking these certain type of questions when it comes to self. Because the reality is y'all will be in situations. You will be in situations where you allow yourself to lose your identity, your focus, your purpose, and things you need to better thyself. Here's what we're not going to do. Act like Tom just ain't, ain't going to just pass you by. You can't get Tom back once it's gone. You can't get Tom back once it's gone. So you got to spend your time wisely. So I'm telling y'all, when it comes to your life, you better live. Y'all got to stop holding on to stuff, man. I told one of my homegirls this yesterday. I said, there are more people, what up, Pops? There are more people on the planet that lives a dumpster lifestyle. Here's why. You hold on to stuff, but what you hold on ain't healthy. You hold on to negativity. Somebody can say something wrong to you, and you walk around mad all day. Because your life, you treat your life as if it's a dumpster. Meaning, you hold on to trash energy. Trashy emotions. Life is like a dumpster or a trash can for you. But here's the thing about that. The trash can lives a better life than you. Here's why. Because the trash can gets empty once a week from the city. You, you hold on to stuff in your childhood that you ain't got over. You hold on to stuff that happened last year. You hold on to stuff that happened last week. You hold on to stuff that happened yesterday. Some of y'all holding on to stuff that happened this morning. Your life is a dumpster and a trash can. The trash can lives better than you because even the trash can get empty once a week. But you ain't filtering nothing. You ain't letting go. You still talk about that same conversation. You still talk about that situation. You still, you still moving in certain type of ways. You still up and down emotionally. You're still making excuses as to why you can't live before you die. Because you don't know how to let go. You don't know how to mature. You don't know how to develop. So the reality is at some point, man, you have to grow up. You have to grow up. Because y'all hold on to things that don't matter. You hold on to things that ain't better than you. You hold on to things that don't attest to increase or betterment. Or peace, love, serenity, tranquility. You don't hold on to things. Y'all treat y'all life so much like a dumpster. When somebody says or does something negative to you and you treat your day, your valuable day, your time by focusing on something you can't change or control. That's an issue for me. At some point, you're going to have to live. At some point, you're going to have to forgive. At some point, you're going to have to let go. At some point, man, you're going to have to grow up and make a conscious decision. Here's what we're not going to do as the song say. Keep holding on to mess. Because if you're holding on to mess, you're keeping yourself from being blessed. See, I'm telling you, you're going to have to take on one or the other. You're going to have to pick your poison or pick your healing. And I'm telling you right now, if you holding on to mess this morning, you're not going to be blessed. If you are holding on to mess, it's impossible for you to be blessed. Because look at what you're holding on into your temple. Look what you're holding on in your mind. Look what you're holding on in your heart. Look what you're holding on in your soul. Yeah, what we're not going to do is keep holding on to mess. What I love about kids, kids are easy to forgive. Kids can play in the sandbox, fall out, and five minutes later, they're back playing again. But adults, they love holding on to stuff. They love keeping stuff. Y'all, man, I know people that have been holding on stuff for 20 years. And I look at them, I said, man, you, you was once a young fool and now you're an old one. I told a lady that last week, she looked at me like I was crazy. I said, you was once a young fool and now you're an old one. Because you still own that? You still holding on to that? You need some healing, baby. You need to get around some healthy people. I'm sorry that nobody ain't never tell you this, but I will.
Because if this happened 21, 21 years ago and you've yet to address it, you've been carrying these burdens all the years. I know your life ain't been promising. I know your life ain't been healthy. You've been missing out on some great opportunities life was trying to offer you. Why? Because you're holding on to mess. And when you hold on to mess, it's impossible for you to be blessed. You got to choose one or the other for things to work out in your favor. So your life is the way it is for a reason by what you hold on to. If you say something negative to me and I know it to not be true, that's just your opinion, baby. Okay, that's just how you feel. That's your perspective. Everybody know how I am. My people that I talk to on a day, day oh, that's just your perspective. Oh, that's just how you feel. Okay. I never take nobody's human right to feel. I never take nobody's human right to feel. That is your human right to feel. So if you feel that way, and even if you feel a certain type of way about me, that's how you feel, baby. But guess what? That's how you feel in your body. I got my own feelings. I got my own perspective. I got my own way of living. I ain't trying to inherit your energy, especially if it's not true, especially if it's not factual. See, y'all got to stop allowing people to clone you emotionally, whereas they don't like something about you and they want you to feel bad about what they said about you. But what do you feel about you? Here's why that's an important question. You're going to be with you all day. You're going to be with you for the rest of your life. So why aren't you more concerned about how you feel? Why are you giving other people's opinions more weight than yours about your own life? Wake up. Wake up. Live your life. That's so I'm okay with people giving opinions whether I agree with it or not. But that don't mean I got to live by it. That don't mean I'm going to let it dictate me. That don't mean I'm going to allow it to give, have dominion over me. See, y'all got to learn how to be mentally strong because people will manipulate you, play mental gymnastics and make you feel bad. And you shouldn't even feel bad about a decision you made, about something you want to do about your life. Understanding universal law, principles and values that you're going to be with you for the rest of your life. People can't feel what you feel. People can empathize. People can support. People can help. But they cannot truly, totally feel how you feel. Because sometimes in life, how you feel is real. But sometimes in life, how you, if there's a difference between how you feel versus what's real. Because if how you feel is not supported by facts, statistics, and data, then we got to start questioning why you're so emotional. Why are you overly emotionalizing a certain situation? Why have you held on to something that you should have been let go? Why can't you forgive and move on? See, there's some opportunity of growth there. There's some opportunity for you mature. There's some opportunity where you got to get over yourself. Because as time go by, if you're still on the same thing, you ain't progressing. You would never know the roads if it would have stuck to the thorns. You would not know how beautiful a rose can be. Come on, speak God. But see, you, you don't want to be that rose. You want to hold on to stuff. Life becomes thorny because you don't want to reach your full potential. You can't get to where you want to be and where you need to be because you're still caught up in pain. You're still caught up in your struggle. You're still caught up what happened in 2021. You're still caught up in what happened in your childhood. At some point, for where you want to be, for how you want to grow, for what you want to have, you're going to have to learn how to let go. You're going to have to learn how to forgive. You have to learn how to make peace in what you've been through and what you've gone through so you can start to appreciate life where God is taking you. This is a mission vision thing, but it's up to you. Can't nobody live this life for you. They only can support you. They only can want best for you, but they can't do it for you. Why? God gave you this life with great responsibility. Come on, speak God. If you're not happy right now, that is not my job. That is not somebody else's job. That ain't mama job. That ain't daddy job. That ain't pastor job. That ain't anybody else's job but yours. See, when you start holding yourself accountable, you'll start being responsible. Responsible for your well-being. Responsible for your happiness. Responsible for your peace. Oh, Jeff, I ain't heard from you in a while. I said, yeah, I had to do me. I had to do me. I had to make sure I'm good. Yeah, responsibly, respectfully, I had to do me. Yeah, make sure I'm good. I said, you know why? Why, Jeff? Because I got, I'm going to be with me all day. 
You're going to come in and out. You can be all and off my phone. In and out my day. You can stop loving me today. Be gone tomorrow. You can die for me. Die for me. I'll never see you again. You can switch up on me. But guess who I'm still stuck with? Me. So I need to make sure I'm good. At all costs. I'm responsible. Some people are going to come to you as the enemy and say you're being selfish. And in reply, you should say, no, I'm responsible. Because I understand and respect life. See, people are going to try to play mental gymnastics with you. Want to make you feel bad for making certain decisions that you know you need to do for your own self-worth. Your own health state. But I'm telling you, you can't get, you can't get caught up in everybody else's opinions. You need to be caught up with yours. See, some point, sometimes you give too many cares going out, but you ain't kept enough cares from within. This is why you all over the place emotionally, because you care so much about what somebody else think about you versus thinking about how you feel about you. That's an issue. That's a problem. You got to change. At some point, you got to grow up. At some point, you got to spiritually mature. At some point, you got to say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to have to let this go. It ain't healthy for me. It ain't working for me. It ain't bringing the best out of me. At some point, you got to tap into your maturity and move accordingly. Yeah, I told my homeboy, I said, boy, I ain't no, I ain't no, I ain't no advocate for divorce. No, no. But I am an advocate for healthy living. I said, I don't want you to get the wrong perspective. Oh, hey, what you see, even with my clients that come to me with relationships, I've never told him or her to leave their relationship or leave their marriage. What I do, though, in the wisdom is pull all the cards on the table in truth and say, did this look like something you want to continue to invest in? Does this look like something you want to stay in for the rest of your life? After we done pulled out, did, we done got the shovel. We done digged out so much from him. I done digged out so much from her. I done laid it all on the table. Is this worth fighting for? Now you got to make a decision. Put your big boy boxes on. Put your big girl panties on. And make a decision. Because I can't make it for you. You know why I don't make decisions for grown people? Because I can't live your life for you. I can't live your life for you. If I can live your life for you, then maybe so. But the fact that I cannot live your life for you, I cannot make a decision for you. So you got to make the decision for yourself. My job is to pull all the cards, all the truth on the table. And you look and see that it's worth it. You look and see that this account called a relationship is investable. You look in this relationship and see if it's building interest. You look to see if you're growing and it's showing. You look to see if you're healthy, if this situation is bringing the best out of you. Yeah, I told her, I said, no, I ain't an advocate for divorce, brother. I'm an advocate for healthy living. See, when I filed divorce, hey, that was an executive decision that I made being grown. Being grown. Because some folk think they're grown, but to be grown, you got to be able to make the tough decisions. Hello. Some folk think they're grown because, you know, you know, they got hair on their nuts. Some women think they're grown because they got titties on their chest. That's a lie. You look grown. There's a difference. Grown is what grown does, and you do this consistently. It ain't even you ain't got to think about it. It comes, it flows effortlessly. To be grown, you got to be able to make the tough decisions. I made that. I saw that it wasn't working. I saw that it wasn't bringing the best out of me. I saw the effects of how it was affecting the kids, and I made an executive decision. I made an executive decision because I didn't want people that I love that's attached to me responsibly to be affected all because of a look, an image, or a facade. No, nah, I don't fake it over here, baby. So I told my I told my homeboy, I said, hey, brother, I'm not an advocate for divorce, but it does happen. But only you know, because here's the thing about relationships. When y'all behind y'all closed doors, only you and your mate and God knows how y'all was living. Y'all know how the relationship going. You know, you know, when you know, you know. The question is, are you going to react and respond to what you need to do and how you need to do it? For what's best for your life today in your life going forward? That is the question.
Yeah, so I, I mean, I told him, I said, bro, I said, bro, listen, 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 listen clearly, listen clearly. I said, bro, I'm not an advocate for divorce, I'm an advocate for healthy living because I don't advise people to stay in positions and places where there is no opportunity of growth, no potential where things are going to get better. Are you healthy? Are you at peace? Is this bringing you closer to God or bringing you further away? Are you developing? Do you see the betterment of self and the betterment of your whole organization? I wouldn't advise nobody to be there, but you got to make that choice on your own. Just like me as a man, I made my decision to file a divorce and I stood on it. I stood on it. I'm all man. Every decision I make in life, I stand on it. Y'all got to start standing on this life because the reality is you only get one. And when it's over, it's over. I, I teach y'all, I teach many. The reality is you got to learn how to stop wasting your time. I say I can't. I done gave all I can give. I can't. I can't keep giving. I can't keep putting my interest or my value into an account where it's not building interest, where the account is not growing, where there is no increase. I can't keep investing. Oh, Haggai says it best. Ooh, Haggai says it best. You have so much, but you bring in little. Come on, speak, God. Oh, you eat, but you're still not full. Haggai said you drink, but you still thirst again. And he that earn of wages, earn of wages what? To put it in a bag of holes. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. That's what Haggai says. See, that's a, that's a wisdom. Who wants to drink and always be thirsty? Meaning you are in a situation, you're dealing with a person, you're dealing with a place, you're dealing with a thing, and you're unfulfilled. It's not only not fulfilling the body, but it's not even feeding the spirit, the mind, the heart, the soul. That's why Haggai said, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. It's your ways. Like I told my good brother yesterday, my homie who called me, I said, brother, your value is not just contingent upon your capabilities, but it's also contingent upon what you allow and what you accept. And if you accepted some BS, if you're allowing certain situations to go on that you know not good and healthy, I can blame her, but I got to start blaming you, brother. Here's the part where you got to hold yourself accountable. Some of y'all will allow and accept some things you know you shouldn't be accepting. Some of y'all will allow and accept certain things that if you did it to them, they wouldn't accept it, but you over here embracing it. Come on now. Over love? You being a fool for love? Come on now. At some point, you're going to have to grow up. Grow up so God can show up, and here comes the glow up. At some point, you got to get tired of what you've been through and what you're going through and make a change. I'm not willing to stay nowhere where I cannot grow, where I cannot be successful, where the best is not holding me accountable to be that what I am. Do my calling. Work my work. I cannot stay where I cannot pray, where I cannot upgrade, where I cannot develop. So at some point in life, you're grown or your grownness or you practicing adulting should reveal itself where you can make an executive decision, even if it's tough. That's what grown people do. You make a tough decision, even if it hurts. But I'd rather you be hurt for a moment than to be damaged for a lifetime. Here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to waste no more time. Here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to sit here, man, and make excuses. Here's what we're not going to do. Is sit around here, jucking and jiving with time as if you're not going to die. You're going to be dead a lot longer than you are alive. So why are you wasting time focusing on something you can't change or control, things that don't matter? Why? 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 Why you don't love yourself enough? Why do you keep making excuses? 
Some people looking for an excuse just to stay. Come on, speak, God. I'm talking to somebody right now. Somebody is looking for an excuse to stay in a bad situation that you know personally ain't no good for you. That's wrong. That ain't right. And if you got children, that's not right. Some people are more concerned about how the children are going to be affected <laughs> if you leave. You need to be worried about how the children are going to be affected if you stay. Because children don't learn by what you say. They learn by what you do. They project, reflect, repeat. They mimic. Some of y'all been in these relationships and you more, well, you stay an extra year. You're staying two years. You're in a relationship staying because of the kids. You're more concerned about how the kids are going to be affected if you leave. You need to be concerned about how they're going to be affected if you stay. If you stay in that bad situation. Because the reality is some children, and I know a couple homegirls and homeboys that think love is toxic. Love is toxic and it's not. Because you seen mom and daddy argue all the time. You seen mom and daddy be at each other's throat all the time. You think that's love. No, that's not. No, that's not. That's not, that's not, that's not. Y'all see, y'all, a lot of parents don't hold themselves accountable for what they do in front of their kids. But wonder why their kids grow up and pick the same man. Grow up, pick the same woman. Grow up, go through the same experiences you went through. That's called generational, generational cursing. That's called generational cursing. Where these children, you created this chain of curse and all they did was become a link. They became a link to your toxic behavior because you didn't want to put betterment in their eye. Newsflash, your eye is the light to your soul. So it can conflict with you. By what you allow to go in your eye consistently. So don't, don't get mad at your children for how they act, how they move, how they speak. Maybe they got it from you. Maybe if you didn't put it in their eye all the time, you didn't put it in their face all the time, maybe they wouldn't be mimicking your life, repeating what you went through, what you're still going through. Y'all got to start taking your life serious. You got to start moving in a healthier way. You got to start making better decisions. Here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to keep doing, putting stuff in our children's eye that we know ain't healthy. Because the eye is the light to the soul. And these children, these babies going to be conflicted. Some, some little girl is going to see mama get a beat and abused and don't think that's the type of man she's supposed to have. Because that's all she see mama accepting and allowing. Accepting and allowing. So she's going to meet some nincompoop out in the streets and she's going to think that's a form of love because she's seeing the one who she loved, which is her mother, go through that and accept it and allow it. You see how you already don't raise or conflict or dictate or manipulate your child by what you allow them to see, by what you allow and what you accept? Some son don't be going to be chasing these hoes because daddy just wanted to be a cheater and want to be a player. Daddy just wanted to be with this girl and that girl, have this girl, that girl coming in and out the bed, in and out the bed, this girl, that girl doing, nah, nah, so now he out there thinking that's the way to be, ruining young daughters' lives because of his daddy's behaviors. Here's what we're not going to do, keep putting foolishness in our children's eyes and then get mad at them when they're doing the same thing you were doing. You raised them that way, whether you told them, you showed them. They inherit this. You tattoo this to their spirit because the eye is the light to the soul. So like my mother always say, don't whoop their butt, whoop your own butt because you're the power of influence to their lives. You're the reason why they act the way they act. You're the reason why they move the way they move. How you going How you gonna put something in your children's eye and they get mad when they do the same thing you done when you was their teacher? You was their raiser. You was their primary influencer. You just gonna have to grow up. It's your fault. Hold yourself accountable. Do something about it. Don't get mad at them. Get mad at you. And do something about it. 
How about change? Because the best apology is change behavior. You got to learn how to grow. Grow to a point where it shows. Where it's something that becomes second nature. You ain't got to re rehearse this. This ain't no routine. This is just who you are. Like I told a homegirl this morning. <laughs> Baby, I don't love people for what they do. I don't love people for what they say. Baby, I love because that's who I am. Come on, speak. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. My love does not come contingent upon your actions. Because that's another form of manipulation and dictating. I love because, nigga, that's who I am. Nothing you do outside of me makes me a lover. What makes me a lover is by how I operate with no influence. So a true lover is not dictated. A true lover is not manipulated. A true lover doesn't move contingent upon one's words or actions. If you are a true lover, it's because that's who you are. That's who you are. So I'm telling you, no, I told her, she said, man, wow, 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 Jeff, wow, 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 that is so deep, that is so deep, I said, yeah, it's, it's real, I said, whether you was nice to me, whether you didn't, that doesn't change who I am, I love you because that's who I am, not because that's what, what you do for me, or what you say to me. Because I'm a true lover. That's who I am. You can be long gone. You can switch up. You can get mad at me or do whatever. It doesn't change that I am a lover. Because I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to be with me for the rest of my life. You're going to be with you for the rest of your life. Stop allowing experiences. People, places, and things to change you. Because if one circumstance changes your worldview, it only means that you're not only weak-minded, but you ain't been living right prior to that fraction, that infraction, or prior to that circumstance or situation. You wasn't secure with self prior to what happened. Because there's no way you've been living with you all your life and you can allow one relationship or a no good man or a no good woman or a denial or a no dictate your whole life, your whole worldview. That is foolish. That is insane. That is crazy to me. My mind can't wrap around it. I won't even feed into that. You've been with you all your life. I don't care what you went through. I don't care what you've been through. You've been alive longer than that relationship. You've been alive longer than that problem. You've been alive longer than that pain. So stop allowing certain circumstances to control you. Dictate you. Move you in a manner or a demeanor. Make you waste a day. Got you tripping and slipping on life, losing grips. Why? Because you gave something power it did not deserve. That, that don't deserve that much power to influence and change how you live. There's no circumstance that can change my worldview in a negative way. Not a negative way. It only becomes a negative way when you give it that much power. The power of influence is dangerous because when that influence is bad, it can ruin you if you allow it to. It comes by what you allow and what you accept. At some point, you're going to have to grow up spiritually and seriously take your life more serious than you've been doing. Learn how to forgive. Learn how to let go. Stop living a dumpster mentality where you hold in trash. Hey, if you want to go step in your garbage can right now and live and sleep in it, stop living like it then. Because that garbage can lives better than you. Because at least that garbage can gets taken out once a week, filtering and emptying itself when it's full of trash. Somebody comes and pick it up and empty it. But look at you. Not only do you live a dumpster mentality, not only do you have trashy behavior, but you keep it. 
The garbage can gets taken out once a week. But look at you. You've been holding on to this situation for years, months, since your childhood. Five years, ten years down the road. You still own that? When are you going to come back home? When are you going to become free? When are you going to get that spiritual release? When are you going to wake up and say, you know what? I got to learn how to let that go. I got to learn how to forgive. I got to live my life while I'm still being offered it. I got to stop wasting time. I got to grow up. See, y'all don't take your life serious. So life don't take you serious. People don't take you serious. People treat you how you treat you. Come on, speak, God. That's the energy you give off. People treat you how you treat you. That's the energy you give off. At some point, you're just going to have to grow up. Yeah, I am not an advocate for divorce. I'm an advocate for healthy living. Now, to explain this to my homeboy, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, brother. I love love. I love seeing people live their life single. I love seeing people live their life when they're married. I just want to see you win. I just want you to make what's make the best decision for your life going forward today. That's all. But guess what? Newsflash. Only you can make that decision for yourself. Nobody else. Only you can make that decision for yourself. Nobody else. I just want to see you win. Whether you're single or in a relationship, whether you're married or not, I just want to see you in. But make sure you're in the best position of life. Because when you're in the best position of life, you can receive the best what life has to offer. Hello. Hello. So, yeah. Nah, I'm, I'm an advocate for healthy living. So, if healthy living means you need to be single, you, you got to make that choice. Otherwise, go back from which you came. But if you go back to trash... Don't complain about it because you made that choice yourself. Take ownership to your decisions. Homegirl said, oh, that's my man. That's my man. I said, well, take care of him then. Oh, that's my house. That's my house. Well, clean it up then. Oh, that's my car. That's my car. We'll keep it up then. Anything you mind, you're taking on and attesting to ownership. That means that's your responsibility. Anything you mind. God said, be conscious what you mind in your life. Be conscious what you mind. Because where there's a mind, there's ownership. Where there's ownership, there's great responsibility. Come on, speak God. So if you mind your stuff today, God said, keep it up. There's some level of ownership there. There's some responsibility there. You need to take care of it. Anything you mind is your responsibility. I told my homegirl that she was like, <laughs> she said, I ain't fooling with you. You crazy, but you tell the truth. You try, I need to hear that. She said, I can't even get mad, Jeff. I can't even get mad. She, she said, I want to get mad, but I can't, I can't, I can't debate with you on this. I said, tell me I'm lying. Anything you mind is your responsibility. You got to take ownership with this. You got to show some accountability. You minding all this stuff, but ain't handling your business. Shame on you. The owner of Bank of America ain't sitting around not making sure the business ain't being handled. How else would Bank of America still be here if the owner didn't show ownership, meaning taking responsibility of the bank? That's my bank, meaning my responsibility. So y'all got to Start opening up the windows of your mind. Hold yourself accountable and respectfully start handling your business. You gotta be about your business. I am an advocate for healthy living, whether you're single or married. I am against staying in unhealthy situations where there is no potential or opportunity of growth, betterment, development, peace, Love, tranquility, spiritual increase. No. Like I always say on my lives, <laughs> I ain't going nowhere where I'm not elevated, celebrated, motivated, or loved. I'm not. You won't catch me there. And if I'm there and things shift and change, like my brothers will let you know, 
Jeff gone. Jeff gone. Oh, Jeff out. As soon as this shift left, I'm out. I'm gone. I ain't staying in no mess. I don't deal with messy people. Messy people only have the spirit of a spilling. That's why your life messy. Because you keep aligning yourself with other messy souls. Then you got to get with a person like me, a bounty, a quicker picker upper. Because you're dealing with somebody that is messy. And they done spill so much BS in your life that you're not excited about living today. I can't even, you can't even tell nobody when the last time you smiled. You don't feel healthy on the inside. You ain't even excited about living. Why? Because you messy and you're dealing with other messy people and they done spilled so much in your life that life is a big old stain. Mm, come on. God. Life ain't nothing but a big old stain because you're messy or you're dealing with somebody who is messy and they're spilling over bad energy. Bad behaviors in your life. And you're allowing it and accepting it. But you said you want to be happy. You said you want to be, be loved. You said you want to be successful. I'll wait. I don't even know why you know what time it is. When are you going to remove yourself from that situation? That certain friendship. That certain family member. That certain relationship. When are you going to remove thyself? I'll wait. You, here you are saying you want to live a healthy life. Here you saying you want more out of life. Here you saying you want to live and not die. Here you saying you tired of struggling. You tired of being hurt, but won't make the necessary choices for what's best for your life today and your life going forward. Stop lying to yourself. Because the worst lie you tell is the one you tell self, it's going to be all right. It's going to get better. It's going to change. No, it's not. Until you change, things ain't going to change. Because universal law principles and values prove that if you can't change it from the inside, well, if you can't change what's in you, you can't change what's around you, baby. Hello. That's what wisdom says. If you can't change it in you, things ain't going to change around you. So the first change, if you want your, your life to get better, start with change within you. And as you start changing in you, things are going to begin to change around you. I would say the end of my life. <laughs> you ain't on my life for me. You ain't on my life for me. You ain't on my life for you. I ain't nobody put a gun in your head. I hope what I've said have inspired you in some type of way to live your life and make better choices. Put more quality in your choices so you can live a healthier life going forward. Your latter days ought to be your brighter days. I always say, hey, look, hey, look, you got one life to live. Ain't no sense to keep wasting no more time. You got to do what's best for you. Don't worry about what other people got to say. Their opinions don't carry weight. And like I said yesterday, contribution, considering. Contribution, considering. We don't consider other people's opinions unless they are contributing. Come on, speak. I'm talking to somebody right now. It's giving me chills. Oh, man. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Y'all got the game twisted. Y'all got life messed up. We don't consider opinions from people that are not contributing. It's a CC. We don't consider if they're not contributing. How you gonna take the opinion of somebody life about you? How somebody feel about you? How you gonna take their opinion and they ain't contributing to you? They ain't checking up on you. They ain't making sure you good. They ain't making sure you got food in your cupboard. They ain't checking on your kids. They ain't, you ain't benefiting nothing by entertaining their opinions. So we don't consider unless folk are contributing. Hello. Hello. So you got the game messed up. You've been considering too much. And these people ain't even contributing to your life. These people ain't checking up on you. These people don't want to see you win. These people ain't got your back. When you go down, they ain't there. They ain't there to pick you up. So why are you caring so much? Why are you considering so much from an individual that ain't contributing? Come on, speak, God. Stop that. Disassociate yourself. Relocate. Separate. Remove yourself from these type of people because truthfully, their opinion does not matter. Why? Because they're not contributing. There is no contribution there's just only opinions. So the fact that there's only opinions with no contribution, you shouldn't be considering. Those who love and support me, like and share. Like and share. Like and share. Hey, the tip jar is there. My Venmo, my cash app is in the comments in the title. 
But what I want you to do is wake up and start investing your time with better people, better places, better things. I would say at the end of my life, peace and love. A woman functions off love, a man functions off peace. If you take that woman's love, she's going to seek love in some other person, place, or thing. If you play or take that man's peace, he's going to seek peace in some other person, place, or thing. These are men and women's drive. You should respect it. If you can't respect a man or woman's drive, the fact that a woman lives off love and a man lives off peace, and you sit here playing with it, you don't deserve love. You don't deserve a good man. You don't deserve a good woman. You don't deserve good energy. Some of y'all blocking y'all blessings because you don't even know how to treat people when they're doing you right. See, how is it that y'all give y'all all to a no good man or woman, but then you can't appreciate when you get a good man or woman? Y'all love entertaining toxic behavior, nincompoops, people that ain't even considering you. So why are you considering them? Why are you entertaining them? Lindsay? Why are you entertaining them? It's called entertain. Their behaviors are entering your spirit, your temple. And if they enter you, they will come with great influence. This is how a woman or a man can stay in a relationship that they know it ain't no good for them. Because they're being entertained. They're staying there longer than the expiration date. The relationship already done expired, but you're still there. Why? Because you're entertaining them. They enter you, and when they enter you, they will influence. They will dictate. They will manipulate. So at some point, you got to wake up. At some point, you need to seek some help so you can get out of certain situations that you never should have got in from the very beginning. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you something. Anything God given or anything that's God sent that goes unappreciated, the Lord giveth. And the Lord sure enough will take it away. Why? God don't make you put some respect on the name. Y'all don't make people put respect on your name. I'm not an advocate for divorce. I'm an advocate for healthy living. I do not advise people to stay in bad situations where they're not growing, developing, or they're at least the best is coming out of them. I don't advise it. I don't advise it at all. You hear this? Why? This is serious, y'all. Because you only got one life to live and you can die and go at any moment. Can't you see that? So let me ask you this. Real me this. If you died today, you okay with how your life ended? I'll wait. So you satisfied? Or do you got more life to live? Or you wouldn't want your chapter or your story to end the way it ended? This way. This is why I said I don't approve of that. I don't approve of that BS. I don't approve of that, that behavior. But I don't make choices for grown people. Because here's the thing. If I make one choice, I'm going to make many. Wisdom tells me that. Never with my clients have I ever made a serious decision for them. What I do is I lay all the cards on the table. In truth. From digging. And I ask them serious questions. Does this look like something you want to stay in? Does this look like something you want to keep investing in? With everything you know up to this point, is this where you want to be? You got to make that choice for yourself. You grown. You grown. So make it as a man and stand on it. Make it as a woman and stand on it. And if you don't know how to treat a good man or a good woman, God going to bring you to the front of the congregation, front row seat. You ain't have to buy a ticket because it was comped. They sent you to the, God sent you to the front row. You're going to witness that good man that was God sent, that good woman that was God sent. And you're going to witness them living their life, thriving, being loving, peaceful, successful, happy with somebody else. You're going to miss out on some of the best moments of your life. You're going to lose one of the best things that ever could have been given to your life because you don't know how to appreciate nobody. You don't know how to embrace. Some people are attracted and accustomed to dysfunction. And once you realize that, you need to move accordingly. Some of y'all, y'all sit here and wonder why a person didn't love you or treat you right in a relationship. Well, wisdom says, go look at what they were accustomed to. Come on, Go look what they were accustomed to. Go look back at their history. You'll find out that you was the newest thing they ever had. You'll find out that you were somebody they never had. You'll find out that they wasn't qualified for you. You'll find out 
that they didn't know what to do with you because who they're accustomed to is the complete opposite of you. So anything that goes appreciated, God sent, God given, you're going to lose it fast. You're going to lose it. You're going to lose it and you're going to miss it too. Because there's a word called karma where it comes back on your heels to remind you of your dumb choices and your dumb decisions. Yeah, it's you. What we're not going to do is keep wasting time. What we're not going to do is stay in a situation that's very unhealthy. What we're not going to do is keep making excuses and not sign that no excuse policy right now. What we're not going to do is keep allowing and accepting people to treat you certain type of ways that you know ain't healthy. That you know ain't bringing the best of you. What we're not going to do is keep wasting our time not realizing that our time is very valuable. It's up to you. What you going to do? What are you willing to do right now that's going to complement your todays and your tomorrows and your life going forward? I love you. I hope you have a blessed day. And blessed day today going to be blessed and rich if you make better choices. It's Friday. Put some put a yay on your Friday. How you treat your today is going to determine how you're going to spend your weekend. Some of y'all should be going for broke. Some of y'all should put yourself in a happy space. Some of y'all should get around some healthy people. Get up, get out and do something that's going to compliment you, your temple. So you can start beginning to live a healthier life today and your life going forward. Anything that you practice for longer than 21 days becomes a lifestyle. So what are you willing to turn into a lifestyle by practicing it consistently? Because the way you've been living, I wouldn't advise a dog to follow you. I wouldn't advise a dog to walk next to you. I wouldn't advise a dog to live with you the way you treat you. People treat you how you treat you. So you, if you better treat yourself, folk going to start treating you better as well. Why? Because you set the tone for your life. Yeah. You set the tone. I am Jay Pitts Presents. I am your life coach. And class is dismissed. I am not an advocate for divorce. I am an advocate for healthy living. And just because I filed for a divorce doesn't mean you should too. It's really contingent upon where you at and where you plan on going. Where you plan on going. That is your reality. You only get one life to live. So make a conscious decision for what's best for you. What's best for you. And stand on it. Embrace it. Be proud about it. Function as a true adult. Practice adulting. Live your life before you get up out of here. Because you're coming up out of here one way or another. And when it's over, it's over, baby. You're going to be dead a lot longer than you are alive. So please don't waste no more time. I advise you not to waste no more time tripping on some things, some certain situations, past relationships, things that you cannot change, no control, things that does not matter. Because you can't change it. You can't control it. So why are you still on that? Limit your conversations. Stop entertaining certain things that can become triggers to your heart, your mind, your soul, your temple. Come on now. It's up to you if you want to live a healthier life going forward.
Danny Mac, somebody be shine, shine. Better back, back it up like Judy in the nine nine. Now here's what we not gonna do. Spend the rent money on brand new game. Go and take a loan for the SBA. Just for the trip down to Monday, like way. Hold up, wonder if they ever gonna change. Bro, you put a gold record in a frame. So what? Uh, security guards in the game. No, uh, so I'm in my own lane doing donuts. Then I slide. Get a pay five. Yeah. Low, I ain't going a ride Cause I gotta play book that I gotta play my eight. Hey. And class is dismissed. Time is of the essence and it starts what? Right now. Make a decision. So I need you to make a decision today. That's going to make the future you look back at the you of you today and say thank you. Let me say that again. I need you to make a decision today. That's going to make the future you look back at the you of you today and say thank you. When you put more quality in your decisions and you do it consistently, you better your choices. Better choices lead to better lives. Consistent better decisions lead to a better lifestyle. So what is God trying to say in this notion? It's in your consistency. You happy? Keep being happy. Be around other people that's happy. Go to other happy places. You got to be consistent to form it into a lifestyle. It takes 21 days to do that. So you got some decisions to make. What are you willing to do for your life today and your life going forward? I love you. It's going to be blessed. We are. Yes, sir.